Hello, my name is Will Tissen. Welcome back to the second part of this tutorial on using systems analysis for problem structuring. In this video, I will briefly recapitulate the starting point, explain how to apply and use systems analysis in a multi-actor situation, and illustrate this using the wind power example, as in the first videos. In the first video, I have explained how systems analysis can help you structure a problem from the perspective of a single actor. You start from the criteria and then use causal analysis to identify the system factors, means and external factors. You iterate and check for consistency and analyze the results using a system diagram as well as a scorecard. But when multiple actors are involved, limiting your analysis to the mono-actor perspective is insufficient. Some actors might be affected by actions considered by the problem owner and therefore oppose his or her plans. Other actors possess means that are necessary for reaching the problem owner's goals. And these other actors may have entirely different goals and problem perceptions. You will need to explore the perceptions of these other actors, determine their interests and perceptions and find out whether these other actors may help the problem owner reach his goals or not, and why. Systems analysis can help you identify the other actors, represent their problem perception, analyze dependencies, and identify strategies for further action and research. I suggest the following general steps. First, start from the mono-actor system diagram and explore what relevant factors may be influenced by other actors and who these other actors are. Second, identify what other actors may be affected by changes in system factors. These two steps provide a starting point for the third step, a more extensive actor analysis. The actor analysis helps you determine who the critical actors are, those that the problem owner cannot ignore. Please watch a separate tutorial on actor analysis to learn much more about this. As a fourth step, perform a systems analysis for each of the critical actors. Focus your attention on those means and objectives of the critical actors that may interfere with or otherwise are relevant to your problem owner and then extend your original mono-actor system diagram by including the relevant criteria and means of the critical actors. And again, as before, after each modification of your systems analysis, you should iterate and check for consistency. While you develop and complete the extended system analysis, look for relevant insights and conclusions. Do other actors have goals in common with your problem owner? Are there any direct value conflicts? We have a value conflict is one actor wants exactly the opposite of another actor. For example, after a dry spell, farmers want rain, while tourists will continue to prefer dry and sunny weather. Also, analyze what I call cross impacts the impacts of the preferred actions of one actor on the criteria valued by another actor. If these impacts are valued positively, the two actors are potential allies. If the impacts are valued negatively, however, the actors have opposing interests and alternative ways may be needed to prevent opposition. Such insight help identify the potential for arrangements between actors. And finally, in much the same way as in the mono-actor case, the systems analysis helps you identify knowledge gaps that can guide the direction of further research. Let us now look at our wind power example again. Our problem owner is the Department of Energy. It wants to enlarge the percentage of offshore power generation while not endangering security of supply and while keeping power costs at acceptable levels. Remember the system diagram for the mono-actor perspective explained in the first tutorial on systems analysis. Using this diagram, our first question is what factors may be influenced by other actors and who are these actors? 
Let's start at the right hand side of the diagram. We first note that Tenet, the distribution network company, can build new international connections. Tenet also manages the operational balance of power supply and demand. The European Union stimulates the international connectivity of the power networks. R&D companies explore and develop new technologies, and these may lead to influential breakthroughs in available storage capacity, as is also concluded in the tutorial on exploring the future. Energy companies may invest in wind farms and thereby influence their number and size. The Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment is a competent authority for management of the North Sea. It has an important say over where the construction of wind farms is permitted. After the identification of actors who may influence the system, we now turn to looking for actors that may be influenced by changes in the system. Again, going from right to left, the interests of Tenet will be affected by changes in the supply-demand balance of power on the network. Other users of the North Sea, such as shipping and oil companies, may feel the installation of new wind farms at sea will interfere with or limit their own business activities. Investors will have an interest in the availability of subsidies, as will energy companies and R&D companies. Tenet's business will be affected by energy transport costs. Energy companies will be affected by the costs of energy provision. Finally, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment is concerned about an efficient and sustainable use of the space at sea, and this may be affected by installing wind farms. This example shows how a system diagram can assist you in identifying who the relevant other actors may be. That provides one of the stepping stones for more extensive actor analysis. The actor network analysis helps you identify what actors the problem owner cannot ignore, the so-called critical actors. If you have watched the tutorial on actor analysis, you may remember the following table. The actors with high interests and high power are listed in the top right-hand corner. The actor analysis suggests those are the five actors that should be taken along in the analysis. I will now illustrate the next steps in extending the mono-actor systems analysis to the multi-actor situation, but limit myself to just two of the critical actors, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment and the energy companies. Let's first get back again to the mono-actor diagram for the perspective of the Department of Energy. Extending it in this form with criteria, means and additional factors for the other actors would make the graphics too crowded, so I decided to simplify the original diagram a bit. I aggregated some of the factors, like the number and size of the wind farms. I also left out some of the intermediate factors and the less essential effects of scale advantages. The essential relations remain, however. To emphasize the effects of location choice on capacity, I added the factor average wind speed at location. I also indicated that the Department of Energy is the owner of the criteria and of the means by adding the letters DE to those factors and means respectively. Let's start with the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment as additional actor. They are responsible for a fair, efficient and sustainable use of the North Sea and for safety at sea, and have to deal with a variety of users who compete for space. For example, wind farms, shipping, oil exploration and nature presentation. Clearly, not all of these uses fit at one and the same place, and safety may be endangered. We now return to the system diagram, and will use a blue coral for the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment, and add their two relevant prime criteria for the North Sea to the diagram, efficiency of space use and safety at sea. Installing wind farms may contribute to the efficiency of use. 
but less space will be remaining for other uses, possibly also affecting safety at sea. It appears the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment is the prime responsible agency for assigning locations for wind energy at sea, and we therefore modify the original diagram by substituting the original means distant to coast by the means assign priority locations near coast and assign it to the ministry. We also learn that the licensing process is the joint responsibility of the Department of Energy and the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment and add white and blue shading to it. To keep distinctions clear, we use the initials I and E to indicate the criteria and means of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment. Based on this diagram, we can now construct the following scorecard. To the original scorecard for the mono-actor perspective, the two criteria of the Ministry of I and E are added. A green color indicates that the impact on a criterion is considered desirable, a red color indicates that the impact is undesirable, and gray indicates that the impact seems to be neutral or is unknown. For example, if you go back to the diagram, you will see that there are both positive as well as negative impacts in the causal chain between the various means on the one hand and efficiency of space use on the other. Therefore, the impacts on efficiency of space use are labeled as uncertain. The impacts of installing wind farms on safety at sea are negative according to the system diagram, but I note that the extent to which this is the case may strongly depend on the choice of location. What can we now learn from this analysis? First, there are no direct value conflicts. The Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment is interested in other things than the Department of Energy. However, using space for wind farms may negatively affect safety at sea. And the impacts of adding wind farms on efficiency of space use are uncertain and depend on opportunities for other uses, location and perhaps other factors. Therefore, while the interests of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment are not directly conflicting with those of the Department of Energy, it will not be a natural alley either. Let us now turn to a second critical actor, the energy companies, and perform a similar system analysis. Again, we go back to the original diagram in simplified form. The energy companies have two main objectives, security of supply and an attractive return on investment. We add return on investment as a criterion and choose an orange color to distinguish it from the criteria of the other actors and also use the label EC to indicate that these criteria belong to the energy companies. Uh, security of supply is a criterion for both the Department of Energy and the energy companies and therefore we shade it orange and grey. Working backwards from the criteria again, return on investments is determined by the revenues and costs. Revenues from wind farms, in turn, are determined by installed capacity and by the prices received per kilowatt hour. This signals the need for a new external factor. Market prices for electricity depend on the costs of alternative energy sources and are generally outside the control of the actors concerned. Energy companies are prime decision makers regarding the number and size of new wind farms, so we add their investment decisions as a means to the diagram. Now again, we can derive the following scorecard. Focusing on the criterion return on investment for the energy companies, we see that the means of both the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment and the Department of Energy contribute positively. The eventual impact of energy company investments will however partly depend on an external factor and hence be uncertain. Investments of energy companies in offshore wind farms will have a positive effect on the percentage of offshore power and a negative effect on security of supply and on the cost of energy provision. What can we conclude from this particular scorecard? First, 
energy companies share some of the goals and the same dilemma as our problem owner. There is no direct conflict as both value security of supply in the same way. Second, energy companies have a strong interest in close to coast locations to keep the costs of investment and transport within bounds. Most actions of the Department of Energy will also benefit the energy companies. They are therefore potential allies for the department. But the return on investment for the energy companies also depends on other factors, notably the market prices for energy, which are outside the control of any of the actors considered. As a next step, we combine the analyses for the two critical actors. The following integrated diagram results. It includes all the relevant criteria and means of both the problem owner and the two critical actors in a single diagram. The coloring enables us to keep the distinction between the criteria and the means of the different actors. The corresponding scorecard now includes all the means and criteria of the three actors considered. New elements in this scorecard are the cross impacts of energy company investments on efficiency of space use and safety at sea. These are uncertain and negative respectively. So again, what overall conclusions can we draw based on this extended systems analysis? Well, first, there do not seem to be immediate conflicts between our problem owner and the two critical actors considered. Second, support by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment is crucial. Energy companies will prefer near-cost locations, but these are not necessarily preferred by the Ministry. For the Ministry, such locations may be acceptable only if interference with other desirable uses of the space at sea is minimal. Third, as con also concluded in the tutorial on exploration of the future for the same example, important external factors, notably market prices for electricity, will determine the attractiveness for energy companies to invest. Fourth, concerns about security of supply remain. They may be alleviated if more international connections will be realized and if new ways of large-scale power storage would become available in the future, but this also is highly uncertain. Other actors, such as Tenet and the European Union, may be of assistance in this respect. And of course, according to the findings of the actor analysis, we should extend the analysis to include other critical actors, notably Tenet and the shipping companies. I conclude the discussion of the example by identifying knowledge gaps that should be investigated further in light of our analysis. As indicated above, it is important to search for attractive locations where wind farms can be built without interfering with other usage functions and without endangering safety at sea. Investment decisions by energy companies are critical and therefore further research into the factors determining their return on investment is also indicated. To what extent will subsidies work? What is the influence of location choice on benefits and costs? What risks do energy companies face in light of uncertain energy markets? Of course, further research into the security of supply and how and at what costs it may be guaranteed when a larger fraction of power is generated at sea should also be on our list. I conclude this tutorial with a number of more general remarks and suggestions. First, if you've been watching the development of the example attentively, you may have noted slight modifications and inconsistencies on the way. This illustrates the fact that there is not a single best system model. You will need to adapt as you proceed and learn more and more about the problem situation. As more actors are included, complexity of the model will generally rise. For example, if we also include Tenet and the shipping companies in the integrated systems analysis, their criteria and means are added and system boundaries may shift. For complicated cases and more advanced analyses, we suggest the use of dynamic actor network analysis 
or DANA. It is a package of software that was especially designed for applying systems analysis concepts in multi-actor settings. And you may find the software and instructions on the Blackboard page for this course. Second, at a more general level, we have developed separate tutorials on actor analysis and systems analysis. However, as we have seen, the two approaches are not independent of each other. On the one hand, systems analysis provides starting points for actor analysis. On the other, actor analysis provides insights into who the critical actors are and into their positions. In turn, systems analysis helps to sharpen the insights in the mechanisms at play and to specify the dependencies between the critical actors. Iteration between systems analysis, actor analysis and exploration of the future is key to an effective approach. Together, these methods will help you in providing the building blocks for your storyline and your research plan. Thank you for your attention.